Please give a warm open group welcome to Jay Sachinarayana. Thank you. Good morning to the very esteemed group that is present here. This is a very important juncture in uh, the journey that we are undertaking in Andhra Pradesh, trying to introduce the concept of enterprise architecture. I have been uh, working in this area of e-governance for over 25 years now and implemented uh, several projects, designed several projects, consulted on various projects, all of them on a standalone basis, maybe 40 plus or somewhere around 50 plus projects I would have done. But the challenge now is different. The context of uh, the whole enterprise architecture was that in the year 2014 when I joined the new government here, The Honorable Chief Minister, who is very well known for his IT savviness, he was uh, indicating his desire to have a more integrated approach to delivering government services and also an integrated approach to what happens within the government. How can we make the delivery of services not only hassle-free but in a more holistic manner so that the citizens need not uh, have to go from pillar to post? And how can we at the same time introduce a lot of transformation in the way government functions within the four walls of the office. So how can you do these two things at the same time? So we were having a, a brainstorming on this and I came up with the idea, I suggested to him that there is what is called the enterprise architecture. Why not we try? Then he immediately He was not immediately attracted, let me tell you. His concern, and rightly so, and a year and a half later I look back, he was right. He said, you know, all these architectures, studies, you know, and surveys and whatever you do will eat away a lot of my time. I have to deliver results. Architectures are very nice to hear and, you know, grand in the conferences, etc., but not for the, you know, real life when, when we have to confront the voters and people. They want results. So, how do you, uh, I am a little skeptical about the whole thing and, you know, what can we do? So, then I said, uh, sir, give me a week's time uh, and uh, I will give you a road map. If you are convinced, then we will go forward. So, in that one week, I worked really very hard and uh, digested the entire literature on enterprise architecture. Literally, 622 pages of uh, TOGAF version current at that time and other international practices and in seven days flat I produced the roadmap and showed it to him on the eighth day. 
so he was very much i mean any other person would say no no this will still take a lot of time and i have no patience to but i mean the person he is for a long term approach and a, a, a development of a vision and setting path for others he said let us jump into it let us do it that's how the whole idea started and then we went about uh, building this uh, architecture here having said that let me spend a little bit of uh, time on what is its relevance for the country as a whole and where do we stand and also where do we stand vis-a-vis the e-pragati program that we have designed for andhra pradesh so i'll talk about these four things the principles of enterprise architecture which most of us in this room already know but to contextualize those principles i would be restating them just to refresh the memory and then go on to the relevance of ea for india and then our own e pragati experience journey which is a year and a half at this point of time from the concept to this time and finally what are the issues we have encountered and what are the critical success factors for such an exercise to be undertaken we will have uh, time for discussion possibly at the end or there is anyway a panel discussion lined up later we can you know uh choose the appropriate time to have the interaction now the whole thing you know with with this uh, slide on the eighth day when i made a presentation this is taken from that presentation only to in august 2014 so what is this what is the big question do we implement project by project by project piece by piece by piece not knowing where that piece of the jigsaw puzzle has to be placed and placing it somewhere somehow and producing some results or should we look at the big picture have the big picture in in front of you and then you can put each piece at the right place if a jigsaw puzzle we all play jigsaw puzzle possibly when we have time this jigsaw puzzle if you have a picture behind the you know jigsaw puzzle if it is a plain jigsaw without any picture behind it it is very difficult to piece it together you don't know exactly where each minar there or each tower there it gives you an idea of where to place it so likewise if you have the picture in front of you then it's easier to solve the jigsaw puzzle if if the if it is you know picture is superimposed on that likewise for the enterprise architecture it is the same thing it is the difference between working on a jigsaw puzzle without any picture on it a plain pieces of jigsaw or a predetermined picture pre printed picture scattered though on the various pieces then with the help of the pattern of the that picture you can easily put it together is the the difference between you know doing individual projects and to go for enterprise architecture this holds for private sector enterprises and definitely to the government as well so this is the single picture with which he, you know he said yes there is something in what you say so that's how the uh, the kind of uh, uh, philosophy behind the enterprise architecture especially for governments now the enterprise architecture as we all know looks at that big picture which is 
consisting of these four components or pieces as you can call them of architecture with the governance being at the top it is not about technology it's about government and governance how do you piece the functional pieces together how do you put the functional pieces together it is more challenging than how do you put the technology pieces together so governance is the you should have the vision you should have the game plan you should have clarity on what you want to achieve at the end of x years or months as a government what do you want to forget about technology what do you want to achieve how do you want to deliver your services how do you want to analyze your data how do you want to you know produce decisions out of that data analysis that is more important uh, are the most important thing in the enterprise architecture so this four dimensions of the enterprise architecture is a helpful way to you know create that picture and of course the application architecture data architecture and technology architecture are important uh, pieces which enable us to reach that apex level of achieving the governance goals so this is how we have uh, i mean this is what togaf says and this is what any other enterprise architecture would say okay. now just revisiting the principles of enterprise architecture on these four dimensions you need to have a set of principles in front of you without which it is likely that we lose our way in the jungle not knowing which direction to go at some point you are bound to lose your way and then the picture is more confusing than it was in the beginning so you need to have some solid uh, principles around the enterprise architecture and everyone in the government and outside the government in the industry follows them like uh, 12 commandments or 10 commandments as you would say here it's 12 that we have laid down this is again extracted from togaf uh these principles are distilled out of togaf and what is relevant for india and for ap so it says that these principles are supreme inviolable the remaining 11 i mean because unless that rigidity is observed then we will not have uh, you know a single enterprise architecture we'll have multiple enterprise architectures it's no longer it can no longer be called enterprise architecture people have to speak the same language they have to swear by the 11 principles 11 other principles what are those look at government as a whole and not in a piecemeal fashion as much as possible think that the government is a single organization and you are and that is the client government is the client a monolithic structure that is your client and not a transport department not a revenue department not a you know registration department as such or an edu- education department or health department you have so many of them you must we must forget that it, they are distinct pieces and imagine it as a single entity it is difficult for people who have lived and uh, you know in, in the government for 30 40 years or any length of time or people and businesses which are dealing with the government on a one on one basis with each individual department to forget that memory that mental picture of the government and migrate to a situation where you are imagining government as a a benign 
entity which is single singular in nature it is a difficult transition mentally so that is that is i was just telling pallab who is supporting us in this and who is going to speak to you later that we need to inject this to all the in all the key individuals who are going to matter who are going to carry this forward in implementation tomorrow so have a series of this change management workshops all all around let the message go very clearly unless they understand the big picture they they don't know you know what is happening and that might change of mindset won't come is very important then second is information third the third one here is information management is a collective responsibility i can't say that as a department i'll sit on my guns and i will just i'll go with blinkers with my own departmental requirement and not care for the requirement of other department of data from your department it is a collective responsibility it's not any one single monopoly of any department so that is another important principle these are all you know you have to leave out of the experience the departments and agencies which are making part or divisions in an enterprise will have to leave out of their past experience and then come out of that mindset and say no this is uh, a collective responsibility together we gain divided we fall kind of mentality has to come in this so as an organization this is all organizational changes that are required mindset changes that are required and when you go to the set of three principles on the data side data is an asset and is shared just as we have physical assets data of the government is also an asset that is also a, a, a principle and sharing sharing is something very very you know difficult to achieve people to share the data they should i share should i not share that hesitation is always there so data sharing is important convincing people to share data is very important first step then data as a single source of truth is an important principle again how do you produce that single source of truth steve was mentioning in his brief uh, remark that implementing a project in india is a different cup of tea because the numbers are so huge it's such a huge country each state is also bigger than several other countries each province so we are talking of tens of millions of data at the state level and hundreds of millions of data at the data records at the national level and how to maintain it clean all the time and swear by that that each record here is true and you don't create islands of uh, that in different uh, places which are not consistent with each other my name is spelled s a t y a somewhere and s a t h y a in the in some other place both are i mean known used popularly used in this country how is it the same everywhere single source of truth from which anybody wanting the data would take it from there that single source of truth and not create islands of uh, half truths i would say and data security is very important and privacy also i didn't add that but it's need to be added increasingly because there is a lot of activism around this also while it is well known and established in the west The, the, there is no privacy law in india as of today some guidelines exist here and there and so on but so the apex court of this country is currently looking looking at this issue how do you ensure privacy 
of the individual personal data, personal information. So we brought out actually in advance of this, as part of this exercise, a set of uh, principles on data security and privacy. A, a policy on this has been brought out, you know, taking from the uh, very nice uh, framework that the European Commission has uh, had put out quite some time back on this subject of privacy. So security, the other side of course is the privacy. So this is very, very important, doesn't need more explanation. Then on the application side, application should be technology independent and give, so as to give us that flexibility to go with the best of breed as the time progresses. We need not be locked into a particular technology, we should not be. That is one more care we have to take. And all applications are easy to use, user friendliness, citizen friendliness, efficiency, performance, they matter here. And very important principle we have tried to follow as I show in the AP example, develop once, use many times, so that you don't redo things and when you reuse the same component or same application several times, obviously that kind of uniformity will come. Automatically it will come to you. So I will illustrate that later. On the technology side, there are so many technologies, so many things. How do you minimize the technology diversity? You can't eliminate technology diversity in this world. You can't say that I will have a particular technology rolled across the whole of, I cannot mandate that only use this technology. Things will definitely, I am telling you, technology point of view, if you have the same platform and roll it out all over the state, in all departments, if I just bulldoze myself into all departments and say, say that, no, take this technology or leave it, maybe. It is easier, you know, look and feel, easier implementation, easier development, coding, reuse, security, single source of truth. Several things will become easier, but in a real life, it is just not doable because of the very nature of, uh, you know, governments and enterprises. It is just not possible to steamroll. So, technology diversity at best can be minimized and not totally eliminated. You can't have that absolute uniformity across the government. Then technology conforms to define standards, then the interoperability being mandatory. The very nature of the enterprise architecture demands that there is inter basic interoperability which is driven by uh, standards. So these 12 principles we distilled out of TOGAF and then put it together in one chart so that you know this goes down. We need to preach on this now onwards. It's time for as I was telling Pallab that we need to take a massive uh, exercise to imbibe these principles, take them down to the implementing agencies and the key people there. Maybe there are several thousands of them with in 13 districts of Andhra Pradesh. So that is what is the need of the hour today, the next step, logical next step to do. So it makes the implementation that much easier, otherwise there will be tremendous resistance, they don't understand what's happening and you won't get the optimum output as a result. Now at the national level, what is the compulsion? for us to look at EA at this point of time. Is it a case, is there a case for EA at the national level, at, you know, India? So Honorable Prime Minister has been advocating and campaigning this for this Digital India with its own set of aspirations. That makes it more compelling for us to look at, uh, you know, enterprise architecture at the national level at this point of time 
then w having to do with more with less it's not as if we have unlimited resources financially or human resource wise there is limitation so how do you achieve more with less then unity in diversity this is a principle on which our constitution also is founded was founded rather how do you achieve unity in diversity is a need at this point of time and how do you reuse to the greater extent possible to the great greatest extent possible how do you infuse the re reusability into the architecture and a federated architecture rather than a monolithic architecture so that you can despite the diversity you should be able to produce there is a it's an oxymoron unity in diversity is an oxymoron so to say you are saying diversity you are saying unity in the same breath but that is the essence of this country unity in diversity so we have to uh, customize or uh, you know mold the enterprise architecture in such a manner that unity in diversity is possible otherwise it's not workable in this country you know a dictatorship will not work in this country future proofing is another requirement for india you can do something once but you can't go on meddling with it you know throwing it out and rip and replace every often doing it once itself is a great job given the limited resources and time and so on so you need to create the architecture in such a manner that future proofing is um, possible and of course last but not least is the dream of one government uh, again i quote the honorable prime minister when he said very early after he came to power he said less governance uh, leads to good governance so going by that and what he meant was compact the whole thing and government should not be seen as a massive mountain or uh, 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 heaps of uh, different uh, departments but it should look simple and accessible to the common man with least interface or physical interface so it is ch the ea concept chimes with that it, if at all it enables to go there reach that goal faster so relevance for enterprise architecture for india is summed up here and very quickly this efficiency effectiveness productivity of employees in, i have talked about earlier interoperability integration agility in making changes and cost effectiveness and a very a noble thing to pursue is the coordinated and rapid development of entire portfolio of e governance at close spaced manner if you spread it over several years then the entire steam is lost so you do it, you should do it in a closely spaced manner typically each you know project may take a, a lot of time but we cannot afford that in the enterprise architecture environment because it will vitiate the interest the political interest support will dwindle as you go farther and farther into uh, time so you have to do in a rapid carpet bombing manner rather than going one at a time one piece at a time now a few words about uh, e pragati where are we in this e pragati we call this initially as ap state enterprise architecture but i must compliment pallav for coming up with this nice word which is appreciated all over and become a very popular word today in india is this e pragati so pragati means progress so and development it's not about it but it's about development and welfare so this is the vision how do you realize the digital andhra pradesh we have a sunrise ap vision there is a business vision nothing to do with technology nothing to do with it nothing to do with enterprise architecture the chief minister came with those seven missions and for development uh sometime back in 2014 so this is trying to support that and uh, uh, we despite ea etc you have to think in compartment so we have created this the whole landscape has been uh 
divided into these uh, pieces here. I think I've run out of time, but I'll take still two more minutes to complete my presentation. The, uh, the timer there shows zero <laughs> time left, but I would request uh, that uh, you bear with me for another five minutes. So this is the whole landscape uh, of uh, the, the business vision of the government of Andhra Pradesh, which has been grouped on, uh, on the principle of similarity of function, functional similarity. Like whatever is in the primary sector, whether it is agriculture, horticulture, sericulture, whatever you may have, one place. Whatever to do with education is at one place. And whatever has to do with healthcare is at one place. So that they are packaged in such a manner that the advantage of reusability, the principle of reusability, the principle of interoperability is 50% or more is taken care of through this single point. Then we have again divided into waves so that you know it is doable. It is closely spaced but you know sequenced in such a manner that there is dependencies are little bit taken care of and so on. So there are 72 pieces here on this and uh, we are currently in wave one and going on to the other waves working simultaneously on the other waves uh, as I talk. So uh, fact sheet is that there are 745 services envisaged across 315 agencies of the government in 33 departments. 72 projects, those small boxes in the previous diagram, made into 14 packages for operational convenience and also reusability and similarity of function functions and made into four waves. And then this is something about the budget. We have to do it in two years time, which is a pretty, several countries have taken a decade to reach, do this kind of a work. But our mandate yeah. is dictated is that we should do it in two years. So it is good, but it puts a lot of pressure on the whole system. Then about uh, three, uh, two, 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 2047 crores, which is about 350 million US dollars and about $200, $200 million coming from the government and rest through a user charge mechanism, service charge mechanism. So I'll just illustrate with reference to one, how we have done the layering in such a manner in each of those packages. How did we layer it? What is the philosophy behind this? These are the pieces here in the tier. See, we have the views, different views on sitting on top so that citizen centricity, user centricity comes from this layer. A farmer has the views that he or she would like to have. And similarly, a business person interacting with the primary sector, the field workers, the agriculture officers and so on, and the agriculture, horticulture departments, and the senior management like the ministers and so on, secretaries. Then we have the tier one where across the entire landscape of e-pragati, these are common, everybody can use, any department can use, we put them on top tier, like the finance, HR, procurement, and so on, which is agnostic of any department, anyone can use them. Layer two is certain components which are also common across, or tier two is that uh, component, and tier three is what is really material for the primary sector, like the extension, entire life cycle of from seed to crop to market to post market, uh, you know, phenomena. Entire cycle, life cycle of the crop and livestock is taken care of here through these common modules, which are used across these 10 departments, right? And similarly, whatever is specific to a department and not useful to other departments is kept in the tier four. So increasing reusability is observed from bottom to top, as you say. This is the architecture on which we have followed in all the packages. We are trying to follow the same principle. How You can't simply say that reuse the same thing all over the government. There is some limit to that. So we are optimizing this way. So there are 16 modules in this particular thing and about 74 services are out of those 745. Roughly 10% is arising out of primary sector. So same thing repeated for all those blo blocks there currently. 
So current status is primary sector package has been sent out, RFP has been sent out and education we are ready to send out and in this month we are also targeting the other packages work is an advanced stage in about five to six other packages. Now lastly the critical success factors for such a complex, really complex exercise is strong leadership which believes in this visionary picture big picture approach, ownership of line departments, they have to be the owners, it should be planned centrally, centralized planning but decentralized implementation, that is a very ideal way of putting it. Then highly committed team of enterprise architects is needed because we have to really understand the whole picture so that you can write each piece correctly unless you have the holistic vision of the complete picture. So we need that enterprise architecture teams to be fully imbibing all the principles and practices. Precise documentation is very important because you are talking of interoperability, you are talking of you know, connecting so many pieces together as you have seen in the agriculture sector alone there are a hundred dependencies. How do you take care of those dependencies unless you document precisely. Efficient procurement, you can't take months, months and years to procure, then you are losing the whole essence of the whole thing. Effective management of dependencies is very, very important. Otherwise, your jigsaw puzzle will never be complete. You will not be able to put all the pieces together. And lastly, but most importantly, the capacity building from top to, you know, the ground level layers is, is important. This is critical to success, as I would say. Thank you.